Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to Royal Nerd Gaming. I am your host, the Royal Nerd, and it's time to continue ranking every variant in Marvel Snap. We're going to continue with the new system I introduced last video, where we take a look at the card that came out this week, and then we'll go back to cost order. And if you didn't see the last part yet, make sure you check the description for a link to the full playlist, because we'll actually be continuing the tier list we started building in that video here. So when we get to it and you see that the tier list is already like halfway filled out, that's why. And now, without further ado, let's get to this week's newly released card, U.S. Agent. So who is U.S. Agent? Well, he's kind of like Dark Captain America. At least that's how he started out. He took up the name Captain America when Steve Rogers gave up the mantle, but it was immediately clear that he didn't have the same sort of hang-ups like morals and principles that Steve Rogers does. Instead, uh, U.S. Agent was a lot more aggressive and violent. But eventually he sort of figures himself out and decides he wants to be a better person and he even ends up working with the Avengers, I think, under the name U.S. Agent when Steve Rogers returns to being Captain America. You know, comics. All that to say, I think this is a really good base card. I really like it. I mean, it's an action shot. It's got the spotlight on U.S. Agent, like he just got caught doing something that maybe he wasn't supposed to. And of course, overall, the visuals make you think of Captain America, but it's a little bit more shadowed, a little bit darker. In fact, the base cards for the two characters are actually kind of visually similar. Hang on a second. You see, the base cards actually feel very similar to each other, but with some key differences that highlight the personalities of each character. Whereas Cap looks more stoic and focused. U.S. Agent, on the other hand, just looks super pissed off. But I think my favorite details, looking at these two cards next to each other, is how each character is depicted using the shield. Cap is using it as a shield to block enemy fire. He's using it defensively, but U.S. Agent is using it offensively. He's using it in an attack, throwing it at an enemy. To him, it's a weapon. There's just lots of great little details that tell us what we need to know about U.S. Agent. Add on to that that it's a well-colored card with good contrast and a fun perspective, and I gotta give it an A tier. Now, Victor Faro's variant for U.S. Agent is the one that's gonna be available in the Spotlight Cache, and it is excellent. I do feel like we may have lost a few of those little character details that we got from the base card, but we make up for it with Faro's excellent art style that makes it look like they've captured this epic moment of battle in an oil painting. The colors here are a lot less bright than they were in the base card, but that makes sense because it totally works with the style. The dark bluish gray of his outfit stands out really nicely against that sort of fiery bright orange and yellow background that Victor Faro loves to do, and yet we've still got some nice highlighted pieces of his outfit, namely the red parts, his gloves and his boots and his chest. All things being considered, I do like Victor Faro's variant better than the base card. His art style is just so unique, so I'm gonna give it an S tier. And that's it. The only variant in the game for US Agent right now. So if you really don't like that base card art, then your only option is to spend spotlight keys. But I'd probably recommend saving those and waiting until he gets more variants in the game. Unlike Red Hulk, who I really didn't like the base card that much and is a good enough card to justify spending a few extra spotlight caches on getting a variant I really like. In this case, the base card art is already pretty good, and I'm worried that US Agent isn't going to be a good enough card to risk up to four more spotlight caches on getting a better variant. But now, with this week's new card out of the way, let's get back to cost order with Rocket Raccoon. Rocket's base card here is a lot of fun. It's just got so much energy and tells us everything we need to know about Rocket. He's a raccoon and he's got big guns. I love how he's not even really looking where he's shooting. He's just firing guns out to the side wildly as he screams in rage. He's contrasted nicely against this massive explosion that seems to be happening in the background that he probably caused. And I think they've done a really good job of capturing his raccoon qualities, the fur and the teeth and the big Big bushy tail. Even if I didn't know anything about the character, I could tell you that's a raccoon. Which isn't the case for all of the variants we're gonna look at, but for this one, that's a raccoon. So Rocket's base card also gets an A tier. Just some really good base card art today. Now, before I say anything else, I gotta admit, I can tell he's a raccoon. So, that's something. Too bad he looks horrifying. I don't know what it is about the way they've done his eyes and his mouth, but it is causing me a sense of great unease. Kind of like how I think I'd feel if I came face to face with a real raccoon. Kind of like, ah, wild animal. Except it has guns now. 
that would that would add to the sense of unease, I think. I know it's one of Rocket's things to have lots of different weapons, but here I wish he just had two smaller guns. The big one over his shoulder feels kind of awkward and clunky the way he's holding it. Overall, it just makes the upper left of the card feel too crowded. The background is pretty basic. It works to create a good contrast, but otherwise really isn't that visually interesting. And I keep coming back to his weird little raccoon face that's like hissing, laughing, smiling. I don't, I don't know what emotion that is, but I don't like it. Rocket feels like one of those characters that just becomes too freaky when you pixelate him, so I'm gonna give this one a D tier. Now this variant's by Scotty Young, who I think usually does the baby variants, but this isn't a baby variant, this is just a variant, a Rocket Raccoon variant, and I really like it. The colors and art style here actually kind of make me think of Ratchet and Clank. I guess Rocket is inherently a very Ratchet and Clank-esque character, little furry creature with big ol' guns, but this one especially brings it to mind. And I love the look of the weapons and the look of Rocket overall, although this one doesn't necessarily pass the raccoon test. I don't know if my first instinct would be to call this thing a raccoon. Maybe I'd guess Fox first before I noticed the tail shadowed in the background, but close enough. The colors here are really pleasant. Rocket stands out great against the yellow sky and the blue planet behind him. And Rocket takes up enough of the frame and his colors are eye-catching enough. He's still the center of attention, even though there's a giant gun over his shoulder taking up the whole top half of the card. It just helps emphasize how much comically bigger his guns are than he is. Oh, whoops. I totally forgot to move my camera back, huh? I've been small this whole time. Don't worry, it'll be fixed for the next card. Anyway. Raccoon or not, this rocket gets an S tier. Oh, and here's Rocket's baby variant, also done by Scotty Young. Although, I don't know if I can really tell that he's a baby in this variant, other than that he's very small compared to this ginormous weapon contraption he's wielding, but it kind of feels like anyone would be small compared to that. I guess I don't really know what a baby raccoon looks like. It's just, it's just a smaller raccoon, right? If that's the case, th this works. Uh, and I can tell it's a raccoon this time, so. Thumbs up there. Overall though, I feel like we may have leaned a little too far into rocket wielding ginormous guns that are too big for him, which is obviously the point here, it's supposed to be funny, but we're kind of losing him in his own card. The focus of it really seems to be on the gun, if you can even call it a gun anymore. It's, it's multiple guns and rockets and missile launchers all stapled together. More of a super ultra mega missile rocket launcher minigun 3000. Yep. That's what it's called. On one hand, it's definitely very comical, and brightly colored, and super fun, but on the other hand, it feels like, as a variant for Rocket Raccoon, it can get a little bit confused. Like, if somebody saw this without the name there, they'd be like, what am I looking at? Oh, there he is. Definitely a fun and silly concept that I could see some people enjoying, but for me, it just feels like a little bit too much, so I'm gonna give it a B tier. And here we've got a variant by Scotty Young. The Scotty Young really like Rocket Raccoon? Is that what's going on here? Fair enough. I do think that I like this one the least out of Scotty Young's multiple Rocket Raccoon variants. I don't like the art style as much as the first one. The concept isn't as unique or over the top as the baby variant. It's pretty much just Rocket flying through space, firing two guns. Admittedly, two very large guns, which we've come to expect, and I do really like the perspective of him kind of flying backwards as he does so, but there's a few little things that bother me. I don't know if it's the placement of his ears or something about his face, but overall the whole head makes me think more cat than raccoon. And yeah, he's got the eye mask and the tail. It's not like completely unidentifiable as a raccoon. It just feels the least raccoon-like in this art style. Also, the background is kind of plain, just generic space, and that's a problem I've had with a few of Scotty Young's variants, but my biggest complaint definitely has to be the color of his outfit. Why is it blue? Or if it had to be blue, why is the background blue? There are so many other colors you could have used for space. Nice deep purples and reds, or just plain black would have been better. Instead, all of Rocket's body is blending into the background. And that's one of my biggest pet peeves with variants. When color choice stops a character from standing out, it would have been such an easy fix. But as it is, and with all my issues combined, I'm gonna have to give this one a C tier. 
And here's our first Rocket Raccoon variant that wasn't made by Scotty Young. And this one is very visually striking. I think it's the colors that catch your eye immediately. The orange of his jumpsuit is, is very sharp and stands out really nicely against the light blue of the background. I mean, the orange and blue are complementary colors, right? Right? Are orange and blue complementary colors? Yes. Yes, orange and blue are complementary colors. Did it. I did an art. I also really like the sort of classic action hero pose he's in. One big gun over the shoulder, another big gun in the other hand, one strap behind his back. And that dark gray coloring, plus the blue lighting reflecting off of the guns, almost makes them feel more like they're part of the background than they are attached to him. So even though he's carrying these three massive weapons, he's still the focus of the variant. As for his features here, definitely raccoon. Very raccoon. Almost, almost too raccoon. It's so raccoon that the human way that he's acting almost feels a little bit uncanny. But it's fine. It's fine. Slightly unsettlingly human or not, it gets an S tier. I really like Chibi Rocket Raccoon. He's adorable. And look at how well his blue outfit stands out against the orange background. It's like the inverse of the last card. Yay art! Not only does he look like a raccoon here, but he looks like a really cute raccoon. Raccoons can be cute. They're like cats, but with masks and opposable thumbs. Rian Gonzalez specializes in making characters cute, and lots of animals are just inherently kind of cute, even if they are wild or dangerous. You know, like tigers, polar bears, rocket raccoon. I mean, he could totally kill you, but Look at those big ol' eyes! Also, Rian Gonzalez continues her trend of picking just the best colors for characters' outfits. I mean, that shade of blue is so vibrant and eye-catching. And, of course, I love his little death ray with a big ol' skull painted on the side that Rian Gonzalez has somehow managed to make feel like a small little toy gun, and yet it's still bigger than his entire body. It's adorable. Ah, damn it. Did I, did I really forget to fix the camera again? I've been small again, instead of up there. Look at all that space that I have to fill. Ugh, sorry. I'll, I'll get back on track. I'm a mess. Don't, don't look at me. Don't look at me. Move to the next shot. There's lots of this variant that I really like, so Chibi Rocket Raccoon's gonna get an A tier. And that's it for Rocket Raccoon. Hey, two Guardians on the same tier list. <laughs> and they both got their base cards and their Chibis in A tier. That's fun. But we've still got enough space for one more card, so let's move on to Spider-Ham. The next day. Hello. It's a new day. I just wanted to let you guys know that, in case you noticed any slight, near, imperceptible differences between the last shot and this one. Usually I try to finish filming in one session and don't like splitting it up over multiple days, but the fact of the matter is, I was slightly drunk while recording last night. I'd had a few drinks with dinner, I came home, thought I'd try to make the video, and it was taking much longer than usual. Just take a look at this unedited footage from last night. My tie's got dinosaurs on it today. That's fun, right? I like this tie. My friend got it for me. I don't know, I just wanted to show you guys my tie. That was something, I'm assuming. I don't know, I haven't actually seen that footage yet. Or any of the footage for that matter. I've reviewed nothing at this point, but uh, you guys will have to let me know. Uh, how was the first half of this video? Was it alright? Was it good? Did, did you like it? <laughs> Could you tell that anything was a little weird? Is that the sort of thing you guys would want to see? Tipsy card reviews? Let me know in the comments. But for now, Let's get back to the rest of the video. So here we have Spider-Ham's base card. And first things first, I gotta say, I love Spider-Ham. I think he's so funny. I mean, a little pig version of Peter Parker named Peter Porker? Hilarious stuff. But in terms of the base card here, I don't actually like it that much. And I think part of the problem is that Spider-Ham's supposed to be a cartoon. He should be really stylized, but they've gone for the sort of generic style that all the base cards get here. And as a result, it doesn't really fit him. And sure, they've tried to add some cartoony details, like his mouth showing through the mask, very cartoony. But because the style doesn't match those details, it can actually come off as kind of weird looking and creepy. I don't like that I can see his teeth. It's upsetting. Now, looking at the rest of him, I like him going for the donut, that's fun, and his pose is dynamic, although a little hard to keep track of, and I think part of that is just the spider people problem, where you want to make them look cool as they're swinging from webs, legs crossed, arms up and down, all over the place, but the pose still has to make sense, and 
They've done okay here. I mean, we're losing a leg, we can't really see what's going on, but it does the job. I think my biggest problem here is just that the base card art style doesn't feel like it fits Spider-Ham's character. That and the whole thing going on with the teeth. I don't, I don't like looking at them. So I'm gonna have to give the base card a C tier. Now this is an awesome Spider-Ham variant, the Peter Porker variant, how fitting. It nails a more cartoony aesthetic. I mean, it feels animated and yet manages to make Spider-Ham, an inherently very silly character, look badass. This is also a great example of a Spidey pose that looks dynamic and fun and yet is pretty straightforward and easy to keep track of what's happening. Like, I, oh, oh boy, okay, give me a minute. Don't try this at home, kids. There we go. How's that? Yeah? Am I getting it? Yeah? See what I mean? Oh my goodness. <laughs> Holy crap. <laughs> yeah, this is a great variant. I mean, it's just got so much energy, and the colors are bright and vibrant. The background is a little plain, but it does the job. It's a nice bright color that contrasts him nicely, lets him stand out, and those sort of movement lines flying backwards really accentuate his action pose, so it totally works. This is probably my favorite Spider-Ham variant in the game, so it gets an S tier. Oh no, the teeth are back. I think this is actually a great example of what I don't really like about some of the Venomized variants. It really feels like they just slapped a black outfit on him and put a white spider on front and called it a day. And yes, design-wise, at its core, Venomizing a character is just putting them in a black suit and putting a white spider on it. But because that's so simple, it feels like you should be a little bit more creative with how that's portrayed. But overall, the whole thing just feels kind of plain. Take a look at Ghost Spider and Silk here, for example. Their Venomized variants have a lot of the same elements. The black suits, goopy lines, lots of teeth added in, but both of their variants are much more interesting to look at. Silk's Venomized variant still keeps a lot of what makes her her in the variant. You can still see most of her unique outfit. You can see her hair and her eyes like you usually can, and that red scarf that makes her so identifiable. Now, Ghost Spider's variant is probably more directly comparable to Spider-Ham's in that they both have the symbiote completely taking them over, but even hers has a lot more elements of who she is than I think Spider-Ham's does. Her hood, her ballet shoes, her pose is elegant because she's a dancer, and the way that the tongue is wrapping around her almost makes it look like she's ribbon dancing. It's beautiful and kind of gross. Both of these variants feel more distinct. They use their venom aspects to enhance what makes these characters unique, not replace it. Whereas with Spider-Ham's variant, it doesn't feel like we've got anything here that makes him him, you know? It's not cartoony, it's not bright and silly. This isn't necessarily Spider-Ham in a Venom suit, it's just some random angry pig. Just like the base card, it doesn't really feel like the variant here fits Spider-Ham's character, so I'm also gonna give it a C tier. If there is one character that Dan Hip's art style is literally perfect for, it's Spider-Ham. I mean, Dan Hip's the cartoon guy. Spider-Ham's literally a cartoon. Oh, it's a match made in heaven. I mean, what else do I have to say about this? That the colors are great? Of course they are. That I love the iconic web shooty Spidey hands? Of course I do. I also love his big adorable eyes. And the fact that he's eating a hot dog is obviously hilarious. Don't worry, Dan Hip has confirmed that it's human meat. So do with that information what you will. Plus you can tell he's already taken a bite because his cheeks are all full, but I don't have to see his teeth, so. Thank God for that. This may very well be the most fitting Dan Hip variant of all time. And yes, it is an S tier. And of course, Rian Gonzalez's chibis continue to be just so cute. Although, I do think in this instance, my disfavor for seeing some of the characters portrayed as chibis is a little bit stronger than how much I love Rian Gonzalez's art style. I mean, don't get me wrong, this variant is so pretty and nice to look at, but Spider-Ham is a character that I have a very specific idea of how I want to see him portrayed. I'd rather he be a little bit more silly than cute. I think Dan Hip struck that balance really well. Here, he's just undeniably cute, and the colors are bright and vibrant. The little Spider-Man and Spider-Gwen sharing in his picnic with him is so fun as he eats potato potato chips, potato chips, and a hot dog, of course. I don't know what it is with him and hot dogs. But overall, this is another adorable chibi variant. This one's just not quite for me, so I'm gonna give it a B tier. 
Now, when I first saw this variant, honestly, my first thought was that there might have been some sort of graphical error when it was uploaded, and that the background had gotten all glitched out, but at this point, I'm fairly certain that this is how it's intended to be. I even checked a few different sites to make sure all their versions of it matched up, and I think I managed to find a higher resolution image of it. Let me pull that up. Yeah, see, the lines are a little bit cleaner, but I really don't think it helps that much. Overall, I think this is just what the variant is supposed to look like, and I really don't like it that much. I mean, the background is just very hard to look at. I think they were going for a cool, glitchy, stylistic effect, but it ends up feeling very messy, especially with such a chaotic variant. I mean, Spider-Ham swinging along his webs, chucking hot dogs left and right. It's a fun concept, but not very well executed, I don't think. And why make the background red? That's Spider-Ham's primary color. He fades right into that. And you guys know how I feel about that. Even the hot dogs don't stand out that nicely, because the bun is that sort of yellow orangish color, kind of like the glitchy buildings, and the sausages are a reddish brown, just like the background. And to top it all off, Spider-Ham feels very gangly in this variant, like his limbs are weirdly long. And I don't want him to have human-like proportions. I want him to have cartoon pig proportions, you know? There's just a lot of weird stuff going on with this variant that I don't really like, so I'm gonna have to give it a D tier. Okay, now here we have what feels like kind of a darker take on Spider-Ham. He's a little bit more serious than I think we're used to seeing him, and that has to do with the darker colors. They're still very striking, but he's in the shadows a little bit. His eyes are angry, but he still feels like him. He still feels animated and kind of cartoony, even if he's taking himself a little bit more seriously. And you've still got some silly details here, like him jumping over Spidey if you didn't see him down there, his hand on his noggin as he like vaults over his head. That's really fun. Now, we do run into a little bit of that Spidey posing problem here, where trying to give them a cool pose can end up looking just a little confusing. It's a pretty classic superhero pose, you know, one hand on the ground, or in, in this case Spider-Man's head, and one leg out, one arm up in the air. But we really can't see any of his body. And yeah, we're all familiar with this kind of pose, so we can definitely infer what's going on behind his head, but since we're not being shown any of it, it is being left to us to fill in the gaps in his pose and make it make sense. And, of course, I gotta bring it up, the background here is pretty plain. It's a nice color, and a really bright one too, that lets his darker colors stand out. The contrast is really great here, but there's not a lot going on back there. I do wish there was more to look at. This is a really cool Spider-Ham variant, but I've got just a few nitpicks with it that stop me from giving it an S tier, so it's gonna get an A tier. And there you go! We finished filling out the tier list that we started last week. Hopefully this video gave you guys a better idea of how this new system is gonna work out. Most weeks it's gonna be one new card release, and then back to a couple cards in cost order. As opposed to last week when it was two new cards and only one older card, that'll only be when a new season starts. So let me get out of the way so you guys can get a good look at the whole thing and clear out these spare slots, and we can start wrapping up. As always, thank you guys so much for watching. I really hope you enjoyed. Make sure to leave a comment and let me know what your favorite or least favorite variant from today's video was. And don't forget to hit that subscribe button if you're having a good time. It helps me out a lot, and that way you won't miss when the next part of this series comes out. And hopefully, I'll see you then. Farewell for now, everybody. Have a nice day.